All right, so today we will be doing something like this, right? Like this. So I'm not, I'm gonna do it a different way. Oops, sorry, not the way you think it would be done. Um, we'll use some commands that you're not accustomed to seeing. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. And after we're done, I'll kind of get into some rendering and how we can kind of recreate this look. Maybe not as drastic, but um, show you guys the power of ray tracing and stuff like that. So, all right, guys. So everything uh, we do in Matrix, any ring we do rather in matrix gold um, needs a ring rail, right? So let's go ahead, get our ring rail. I'll go ahead, let's do a size 11 and we can right click to enter, right? So from here, we need to create our shank, right? So the easiest way is going to be to profile plate, profile place, right? And then we can do some editing to this profile. So I want to, I can either come here and use my my uh, dynamic commands panel, which I can choose a profile shape with that one. So let's choose this one. That way, it'll give us a little comfort fit. And let's do it about eight and a half millimeters wide. Let's go a little thick, probably 2.5 or 2.7. That'll work. Now what we can do, we have this profile editor right here, right? So we're able to select that. And just to show you guys, let's move it like this. So everything right here is editable, right? So I can move it in and out if I want to more domed, less domed, stuff like that. And it'll give me a live update, right? Let's say I want the walls a little taller. Let's delete that one. Kind of angle it a bit like this. And then we can even make it a little more comfort. like this, right? There we go. All right, so what we need to do now, right? We're gonna create a channel on that. So if we go back to our picture, right? You can see in here, right, there's a, a recessed area that this is kind of just an inlay, right? So what we want to do is create this and obviously the mirrored side and then a nice channel and then the bottom of it. So that way it kind of looks something like a U-shaped like that, excuse the drawing. All right, so what we can do here, I want to put a break in my piece and what we can do is put a corner point and then we can choose where we want that corner right so let's put it about right here and now you can see we can alter this and drop it lower so i want to add one more break right here to make this hard edge that way we can create a bottom uh like a, a bottom surface right so let's add one more corner point to this object and let's put it about right here. So now we can move all of these. We can do something like this. We wanna keep that corner point on the actual corner.
And now we can use this one, which is the angle, right? And we can adjust it and make it straight like this. So now you can see it's been updated um, in the viewport, right? So we can save it. We can do like min, min's inlay channel profile. And then we can hit OK. Hmm. I guess it was too many characters. <laughs> so now we can hit the check, and it's been updated to my viewport. And what we can do now is toggle activate auto sweep and we can see we're kind of getting that look. And if I go over here, right, we can see it's starting to come together. Now, this one, right, has a slight dome to it. And this, we may be a little wide in our model, maybe a little thick too. So we can just pull it down a bit like this. And the rest kind of looks, looks good, right? So I can right click. Is the gumball going to be in the profile editor in the update? Um, I don't know. I, so there's a difference, right, between a gumball. Gumball is kind of a rhino term for, for this object, right? Whenever I edit a command, this is MSR, or move, scale, and then rotate, right? So there's kind of a difference. Um, in the profile editor, right, if you want to be precise, you can turn on your grid snaps. And then your O snaps, right? So now let's say I want to draw something, right? You can see how it's snapping to my grid location, but it'll also snap to points. And then even mid. Like this. So that's kind of how I do it. Also near, if you want to go near the curve, you can go like this. Um, so that's kind of how I do it. I don't know if the MSR will go in there. I know there was uh, thoughts about it, but you, you can always come here and select the point. And with these and these, you can you know, move it pretty precise, so. All right, so just to continue on. Um, so our sweep, our auto sweep has been done. We can right click. So now our geometry is in here and selectable, right? All right. So the next thing we need to do, if I hide this, right? we can do a couple things. So what I want to do is create a surface that kind of goes across, right? And yes, we'll use smart flow, but we'll kind of generate the surface a different way. Um, so I want to extract an ISO curve and then turn it 180, right? So let's grab this. and move it. I think I grabbed the wrong, there we go. Let's go to 180 and let's go to point five, enter. And one, enter. All right, so now it is at the top. And one last thing. Um, I have my seams off, but I want to 
edit this profile and actually bring the location all the way down to the bottom. And that'll help us whenever we uh, lay out using Jolly, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead, extract one more time. Let's go to 0.5 and then we'll do 0.5 one more time. Then we can angle to 180. All right, so now I have a curve right here. Let's go ahead, mirror to the other side. I'll untoggle the Y, toggle the X and right click. So now I have a curve on each side and now we can blend these curves together. This one, blend curve, first curve, second curve. And you can see we need to, if I hide this, we need to flip their direction, right? So if I show this, we can now add a little bit more blend to it to kind of give it that dome, dome look like this. All right, so now we can just do a sweep. I'm gonna change my layer color, right? That way we can stay organized. I'll go ahead, do a one rail sweep from in here and select that. And then we can change them like this. Good. Everybody following so far? All right, so now what we can do instead of auto base, which auto base takes a surface and just lays it flat, we can go to curves, select this. Let's go all the way to the end. From object, and create UV curves. So now it's saying select point and curve. So let's go right here. And you can see it takes that surface and gives us a UV curve. Now we can control Alt C, put it in the middle. That's a hot key for those that don't know, control Alt and C. So now we have a rectangle right, that's representative of this red surface. So what we can do is hit F6, go to the surface menu and make surface. So everybody should be able to get here, no problem. Um, let's go ahead and make this a different color. All right, so the next thing um, we need to do is put the honeycomb look onto that top surface. So we need to create that honeycomb look and kind of match the location, right? So what we can do here is with a command called Jolly. Now Jolly is just a way of taking a hatch file, which is a type of um, a type of file that you know has repeating patterns on it, and putting it onto a surface, right? So I can click Jolly with my surface already selected, and Jolly will run with that surface already in the box. If it's not, you can always select here, select the surface, and it'll update. Okay, so now that we're here, right, we need to choose a pattern. So if I select pattern, you can see down here, I get a bunch of different patterns. So let's zoom in just a bit so we can check them out. So this one's close, but it's not really hexagonal. 
got these little squares in it, but this one's pretty close. So let's select it. You can see it populates like this. So what we can do now is kind of reduce the size. And if I were to put this on here now, right, it would kind of be unsymmetrical. So let's see if we can get it symmetrical. So I moved the V pattern by 0.1 and it's pretty close. See if I can move this once. No, let's move this once. Trying to get these halfway. That way, at the bottom, it'll be a full object. So let's try one more. Yeah, that's pretty close. Close enough. All right, so if we look, the pattern matches, right? Let me erase these. Oop. The pattern matches. Um, I have these little spikes on the end, and I have these little spikes on the end. So I do have a question, can you import patterns? Yes, you can, Ted. Uh, you do have to create the pattern file. Um, there's websites that you can do this with, um, but, but yes, you can import, import the uh, custom patterns. All right, so now that we have our outline, right, we can right click to accept. And now on our surface, we have curves, right? So what I want to do now is select my jolly curves. I'm just going to do a, a quick pipe, right? So let's go ahead, go this way. Select pipe. If I select pipe with my curve selected, you can see it'll automatically pipe you may have to adjust this. So I'll do 0.25 and then 0.25. This is a radius. So if I do 0.25 radii, right? That means my, um, that means my overall width will, will be 0.5, which is good enough, right? So let's go like this. And whenever you are done, right, we can right click to enter and it should pipe them all. Right, so we are golden thus far. Let's select this and this and we can hide them. So now we just need to do what's called a smart flow. Um, smart flow will take an object on a, on a surface and transpose it to another surface, right? So that's under transform. So let's go to smart flow. And now it says select surface base. This will be my base. This will be my destination. And now I need to add my objects to my surface. So select objects. Let's select this group and right click. And then we should start to see them populate on our band.
it's a lot of individual pieces, so it may take a second, but it, it will populate. And there we go. So if I right click, There we go. Let's hide. Okay, let's hide this. And we can see that kind of dome effect. It's kind of sticking out right here, right? So what we want to do, select our pipes and pull up or down to see which way we need to go up or down on our object. And it will take a second one because um, I'm on my old computer and two, because it's a lot of individual pieces, like I said. But what we're trying to achieve is these little spikes to be inside the metal. Whenever you get this little, okay, so you saw that it actually got taller, right? So what we need to do is go the opposite of this one and pull down. probably should have booleaned all of these pipes into a mesh. Um, that way it updates quickly for the webinar purposes, but I think you guys understand um, it's a lot of pieces. So, all right, one more. I want to put this at 0.5 in there. this at one. There we go. All right. Where's this one from? Sorry, I have two extract isocurve from surface, so I'm trying to figure out where they came from. Has there been any questions thus far, guys? You have any? There we go. Okay, so let's see where you came from. So this, I think I just have one too many in here. See, you live and you learn. I'm waiting for it to update, so. Soon as it's done updating. <laughs> I think it may be a combinate. Oh, it says my screen is frozen now. Let's see. Gotta love live demonstrations, right? All 
All right, here we go. Finally. All right, we're good, guys. Yeah, so what I would do to save you guys a bunch of time is probably boolean all of these together because every time I move them, it's just going to recalculate so many different little pieces. Um, so boolean, mesh, boolean them together, you know. Um, so yeah, we are pretty much done. If I look in here, right, you can see that cool little cavity. These are um, 0.5 thickness because of our radius was 0.25. Um, and now anything that you don't really need, right, we can put to our gray layer. And we can just hide it. So I did tell you guys I have Rhino 7 and I've been using it standalone to render in V-Ray because I've been having issues using V-Ray directly in Matrix Gold. Is there any information anywhere about using a different render ender like V-Ray in Matrix Gold? Um, so I know you can. I don't know how, you know, you'd have to open the V-Ray toolbar in here inside of Matrix Gold. Um, you know, like you can do not that layer. Then when this opens up, you can dock it. You can add whichever, you know, V-Ray will be under here, right? So you can add that. Uh, not not sure about that, Ted, to be honest, but I'll show you guys how to get a, you know, really good render using this. Um, but let's do something at random here. Let's add a gem, right? And using the move scale, we'll kind of put them in here. doing something like this and we'll do them at random. That way it doesn't Let's do ones. Let's put them down. Let's do a setting. Let's reduce the size. Let's reduce the rail count. North, south, east. Let's go to level two. Pull the nudge out. We can turn the dome to look set. So let's go back to level one. Oh, that's reduced. Maybe not that long. <laughs> there we go. Now we can select both of these, control C, control V. And what that'll do is copy and paste a new gem and head on top of each other. And then we can just move him around. Okay, so let's edit that head. Let's pull him over here.
There we go. And then oh, one more time, control C, control V. This probably a good place to say <laughs> our job bag, just so if you, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at that, guys. Um, but yeah, the more geometry you have, the more likely it is to crash. And with all those little individual pieces, I'm just pretty worried. So after I'm done with this one, Let's do that. So I will do a job bag. Five hundred and thirty two poly surfaces. So let's select this, right? Our stones, let's put cutters on them. I can choose a style. Let's do this one. Let's increase our girdle thickness. We just want to cover up all of the blue. Then we can Boolean, right? Boolean, let's Boolean purple, purple purple with orange. So the way um, the way cycles ray trace works, right? It takes um, it, it almost exactly what lot your eyes see. So you have to remove the metal that intrudes into any clear object right so diamonds being clear you don't want anything of color intruding into them like the prongs okay so let's transform and let's polar array these objects and here we can choose the number uh, let's go to six seven eight there we go so now we can right click to accept. And now we can do a full save. Honeycomb. All right, so now is where we're gonna do our kind of render preview and show you guys. I want to open this one. With open with maggot. All right. Okay, so we can open up our render studio under render, right? Sorry, let me move that right here. Whenever we click render studio, it should populate. All right. So first thing we want to do is choose a material. I mean, a general style. So we'll apply this one. All right, so if I go to select my green, right, and let's say we want to match this color, right? We know that it's 
yellow gold, right? But we don't know the exact color. So what you can do, right? We can apply our yellow gold. We can apply our diamonds. And you guys know I love my shiny car paint. Let's apply that, right? And if we go to ray trace, you can see it's close, but it's not exactly, I think I moved my object. So it's close, right? It's not exact the same color. So you can go into a, you know, you can go do this online too, actually. You can open up a photo editing app, right? This is one I use called Snagit, um, but we can get a dropper. And then if we get the color code, let's say this one, right? It gives me the color code right here. So I can copy that. Let's go to render materials, and then we're gonna to toggle only show materials in use, right? And then we have our yellow gold that's applied right here. So we can select that. We can select our color, come here and control V, enter, and now it's pretty much the exact same color. So all we have to do is reduce our shine because this one has more of a matte finish. Maybe not that much, but let's go. About here. Let's do 0.85 shine. Then what we can do also is toggle preview render and ray trace, and it gives us this beautiful kind of look, right? So I think I wanna put a few lights in here. So to do that, I'm just gonna go into my matrix materials and then we'll go to lights. Let's go to rec, uh, let's go to directional light. Let's add one here. Let's mirror one to the other side, and then we can select both of them, pull them up, and angle them. And you can see it updating up here, right? just kind of get the, and if you want more, you can always go back to plastic right here. You know, we can angle them more. Let's delete this one. Let's mirror from F4. Let's go back to ray trace. Can you use Snagit to match skin tone? I don't know. I haven't dug that far into it, Arlene. Um, I would imagine so. If it requires a color code, then you should be able to, yeah. Okay, so from here, right, we got everything how we want it. Uh, we would just choose the number of passes, our resolution, then we can render. And let's wait.
So it's uploading the mesh and then it's going to start path tracing. So if I bring back this, It's pretty close, right? I was going to show you a few things uh, whenever this is done, how we can do some photo editing in here, which is really neat. If you guys want to stick around, if you have to go, I understand, but um, Yeah, Ted, um, you should be able to open the V-Ray toolbar inside of Matrix Gold just because it's fundamentally on top of Rhino. I don't think you really need it. And I know Cycles is really different than V-Ray, but I mean, as you can see, it's pretty powerful, you know? It's just about, you know, learning and understanding what it's calling for. So we're almost done here. I'm gonna show you how to do some post effects real quick. 10 more passes, but you can see, I mean, it's pretty clear. All right, so we're done. So let's put some post effects. Okay. So I like to open it up full screen like this. Um, what you can do, I wanna put a focal blur on it and we can toggle it on and it's gonna make everything kind of blurry. There we go. And then we can control the blur if we, do this. Let's choose a focal distance of this one. Let's preview. Okay. Let's do no. Let's do depth of field and open them. So now we can choose our focal distance, right? You can see how everything is kind of blurry, right? We don't have to make it that blurry, um, but we can also choose a focal distance. So let's pick and let's choose about right here. And if we hit preview, You can see the back kind of gets blurry, but yet this area right here becomes super focused. That way it shows lifelike, right? So this is our finished product. And this was our inspiration. So we are pretty much there. All right, guys, is, so we're done. Are there any questions, any comments? Great session. Thanks, Ted, I appreciate that. Rendering for gemstones a little better. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, there's a few things that we're working on with the refraction inside of diamonds, like uh, the way the the facets make the materials kind of reflect. So hopefully that will be added. So yeah, we are constantly developing Matrix Gold. Don't think for a second, we, we're not trying to make the best product for you guys. So we definitely are.
All right. Well, I appreciate you all for joining, guys. If you have any questions about Matrix Gold, please reach out to us at Gym Vision. Um, I think you guys all know the number, but um, if not, you can reach us at 800-357-6272. Um, I'm going to stop. So my name is Bo, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. So I look forward to seeing you then. I appreciate you for joining. Have a good one.